Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Atlantic Council President and CEO, Mr. Fred Kemp. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this warm-up event for the Indiana GOP and Democratic primary returns. Uh, just kidding. Uh, by your presence here tonight, you demonstrate either your exasperation with the primaries thus far, or your support for the Atlantic Council mission of galvanizing U.S. constructive leadership alongside our most important friends and allies around the world to secure the future. If you are here because you're exasperated with the primaries and didn't want to stay home and watch television, uh, then I won't relay to you that most of the major uh, news outlets have declared uh, Donald Trump as the winner this evening. Uh, by uh, a 20-point margin thus far with the returning districts. Uh, and I won't tell you that no one has called yet the Democratic primary, but with 9% returning, it's about 51 to 49 for Secretary Clinton. But since you haven't come here to know about that, I won't tell you about it. <laughs> but because you've come here to celebrate the Atlantic Council and its mission, I will tell you about that. Uh, so in that spirit, we welcome you to the Atlantic Council's 2016 Distinguished Leadership Awards Dinner. This year is particularly meaningful as we celebrate the 20th anniversary of this award, uh, and we celebrate the 55th anniversary of the Atlantic Council, born in the first year of the Kennedy administration in 1961. And look around you. What an amazing audience. More than 750 guests from 50 countries, including former heads of state and government, legislators, top Obama administration officials, some 40 ambassadors, countless business executives, media, civil society leaders, and one world-renowned tenor. Bienvenuto, Vittorio. To kick us off, it is my great pleasure to invite to the stage the Chairman of the Atlantic Council Board of Directors, Governor John Huntsman, a man who embodies the Atlantic Council's nonpartisan ethos, its results-oriented ability to get the job done, and its commitment to decency and to integrity. Governor Huntsman. Thank you, Fred, and thank you for reminding all of us about the primary tonight. I'll be tuning out of the primary personally. Uh, don't hold it against me, but I was accused of tuning out of primaries when I actually ran for president four years ago. So that's, that's nothing new for me. I want to thank Fred, uh, who for a Utah boy is pretty good at calming down and managing very sophisticated audiences. So Fred, uh, we love you. You're terrific. Uh, and, uh, and to Pamela, who's here, and Jojo, who's probably at home, I know they love you too. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, and uh, distinguished guests and friends, welcome to the Atlantic Council's Distinguished Leadership Awards Dinner. As mentioned, this is a record-breaking turnout. This is a big deal. Uh, we've got over 40 ambassadors here uh, who are serving in Washington, which I got thinking is probably even better than the turnout for the State of the Union when you stop to think about it. That's, that's pretty darn good. I'm here with family, and uh, I want to salute them. Uh, my wife, Mary Kay, is here. My daughter, Mary Ann, is here. My son, Will, uh, in uniform, is down here. He's celebrating a very special occasion today. It was his last class at the US Naval Academy that he'll ever take. <laughs> Now, here's the tricky part. Uh, he's not supposed to be away from the yard tonight. Uh, I assured him that there wouldn't be anybody here tonight from the military industrial complex. So he, he should be safe. Uh, on the 55th anniversary of the Atlantic Council's founding, 
Uh, we're here to celebrate four remarkable individuals. We're so excited about uh, those who you'll be learning more about later on because they exemplify leadership, vision, and character, the kind of attributes needed to lead in today's turbulent times. Together, the United States, Europe, and our allies and friends worldwide face one of the most volatile geopolitical environments in recent memory. Seldom has the world been so urgent in need of the kind of leadership that we're celebrating here tonight. So when we gathered exactly a year ago, the world confronted a host of challenges, including a revanchist Russia exerting pressures on Europe's east, and non-state extremist factions spreading violence throughout the Middle East and North Africa. Today, 12 months later, Ukraine's sovereignty is still menaced by Russia, and the bloodshed and instability in the Middle East persists. Europe's solidarity continues to be plagued by an unprecedented set of tests, tearing at the continent's fabric and endangering Europe's place on the global stage. And all the while, new challenges persist. We see the rise in global populist movements, characterized by anti-democratic rhetoric, fueled by a surge in terrorism and sectarian tensions. We're grappling with a migrant crisis of historic dimensions, and we must adapt to the reality of China's rise. Perhaps the most daunting challenge of all, though, when you stop to think of it, is the shortage of long-term strategic thinking and leadership to navigate these complex times. It remains unclear whether our key institutions, or indeed our leaders, will be able to rise to these new challenges challenges or simply be overwhelmed by them. So tonight we recognize the accomplishments of four outstanding individuals. We hope to advance a far more ambitious form of leadership that is equal to the challenges of our times. Beyond that, we celebrate the fundamental conviction that through common purpose and inspired leadership, together we can forge better outcomes for the future. In that spirit, tonight we honor Robert Gates, former U.S. Secretary of Defense and former CIA Director for his exceptional leadership and lifetime commitment to public service. Having, <laughs> having served in both Republican and Democratic administrations, Secretary Gates embodies the bipartisan spirit the Atlantic Council represents. And besides that, He's a fellow Eagle Scout, which is the best thing of all. <laughs> we salute Henry Kravis, co-chairman and co-CEO of Kohlberg, Kravis, Roberts & Company, for his groundbreaking work in private equity. He wrote the book. <laughs> for his impressive philanthropic leadership alongside his great wife, economist Marie Jose Kravis, along with daughter, Kimberly, and besides all that, my son-in-law calls him boss. So the Huntsmans tonight are on best behavior. And we honor tonight General Joseph Votel, former commander of U.S. Special Operations Command and new commander of U.S. Central Command for his steadfast leadership of special operators at a time of global turbulence. And we celebrate Vittorio Grigolo, I think I got that right, the renowned Italian tenor for the inspiration of his exceptional vocal and dramatic talents and his breathtaking performances which have received widespread global acclaim. Finally, it is a privilege to also be joined this evening by some of the most accomplished strategic minds in America's recent history. With us in this room, we have three of my predecessors as Atlantic Council chairmen, each of whom contributed significantly to the Atlantic Council's success and to positioning the United States as a beacon for freedom and prosperity around the world. 
General Brent Scowcroft, General Jim Jones, and Secretary Chuck Hagel. Thank you all for being here tonight, and I'd like to invite the three of these very special people to stand up while we salute them for everything they continue to do to advance the Atlantic Council's mission. General Scowcroft, General Jones, Secretary Hagel, let us give you a salute, please. Of course, General Scowcroft, General Jones, and Secretary Hagel didn't do it alone. We, as chairman, have had the great fortune to work shoulder to shoulder with President and CEO Fred Kemp. Fred, as most of you know, operates with a level of energy and targeted vision that have propelled this organization forward in ways that most would have deemed absolutely impossible decades ago. Notwithstanding the fact that we come from rival high schools in Salt Lake City, we've been able to get along reasonably well. We've created a template for operational peace within the Atlantic Council that we think has great applicability throughout the world. So Fred, thank you for your leadership for working tirelessly and brilliantly to advance the Council's mission and for convening this remarkable community that we're here to celebrate tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Fred Kemp. You know, I, I only have one answer to that, Governor Huntsman. Go Skyline Eagles. Um, the, uh, it is true that uh, Governor Huntsman was the governor of Utah. It is true that I'm from Utah. It's also true that General Brent Scowcroft's from Ogden, Utah. Uh, I think this overwhelming Utah influence on the Atlantic Council is one of the reasons why we have not suffered from this anti-establishment backlash. Um, Governor, thank you so much for your remarks. Thank you for everything you do for the Atlantic Council. It's, it really is such an honor to work with you and to work with Mary Kay. Thank you so much for you as well. Um, I'd like to recognize several key individuals before we go forward. We're joined by three former heads of state, all of whom sit on the Atlantic Council's International Advisory Board. I'd ask you gentlemen to stand, uh, receive our applause, and, and, um, uh, and, uh, and if you could hold till I finish their names. Shaukar Aziz, former Prime Minister of Pakistan. Alexander Kwasniewski, former President of Poland. Car Carl Bildt, former Prime Minister of Sweden. And he comes here uh, with a large Swedish delegation, including Jacob Marcus and Peter Wallenberg. Uh, we have more Swedes in the audience uh, than we have ever had before, even more than there are Utahns. Uh, but it's great to have you all here. We are joined by five cabinet min ministers from friends and allies of the United States. Uh, I'd ask you also to stand and hold your applause until we finish the list of five. Miro Kovac, Minister of Foreign and European Affairs of the Republic of Croatia. Achato Bulama Kane, Minister of Planning and of the Republic of Niger. Karim Kate, uh, uh, Chairman of the Commission on National Defense, Security and Civil Protection of the Republic of Mali. Uhumudu Mahamudu, Minister of the Presidency and Chief of Staff, Republic of Niger. Brownie Sumakai, Minister of National Defense of Liberia. Before you applaud these people, you may have noticed uh, uh, that four of these ministers are from Africa. This just underscores that we have one of the strongest Africa centers of any organization in the United States under Dr. Peter Pham. Uh, uh, and, and salute all of the ministers here. We also have several former Atlantic Council awardees in the audience. You can see a full list on page 36 of your programs. Uh, and please stand as I read your names. Again, please hold your applause. Tom Enders of Airbus. Secretary Chuck Hagel is backstage about to come out. Marilyn Hewson of Lockheed Martin. General Jim Jones. General David Petraeus. 
Lord Robertson of Port Ellen, General Brent Scowcroft, Senator John Warner. I'd also like to ask all members of the Atlantic Council Board of Directors and International Advisory Board to rise so I can thank you personally and we can all thank you for everything you do every day for the Atlantic Council. Without you, none of this would work. Please stand, board members and International Advisory Board members. This is, this is my favorite, my favorite moment of the evening. I want all Atlantic Council staff and fellows to rise. Many of them are out in the hallways helping you come in, taking care of you on your way out. Um, but I would like you all to rise. You are the best in the business and each year you grow stronger. You work with a pace and a purposefulness that uh, is unique in our industry. I'm so proud to work with you. Thank you so much. Please stand up. As previously noted, this year we celebrate our 55th anniversary. As the world has changed, so too has the Atlantic Council. Thanks to the help of so many of you in this room, we as an institution have never had this robust of capabilities. We've grown tenfold over the last decade and more. Yet we may be facing the most complex set of challenges in our half century history. We believe that the world faces a defining moment as important as the end of World War I, the end of World War II, the end of the Cold War. We are driven at the Atlantic Council by a conviction that if the United States shapes the future constructively alongside our closest allies and friends, we can forge one of the most enlightened, secure, and prosperous periods of world history, fueled by human advance that is empowered by technological and scientific progress. Alternatively, if we fail to lead and combine forces effectively. Less benevolent forces or chaos will fill the void. Witness Ukraine, witness Syria. For us at the Atlantic Council, this is not just rhetoric. Each day, across our 10 programs and centers, we execute projects, convene communities, generate ideas, and explore strategies aimed at securing a better future. I've never liked the term think tank. It begins with thinking, but then you have to take it so much further.